Rusty, how does Georgia approach by week? Is it a pretty tried and true method that Kirby Smart has? Do they adjust how they do this throughout the seasons? What's their approach? Yeah, it's usually a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice. And Thursday, they usually do that with the ESP, the students, the young students around Athens. That's how they finish off the bye week. And I, I'm, from my understanding, they're doing that again this year, which is awesome. And they'll do great with social media. Uh, Friday is off day. And those they'll make them work out Friday morning, go to class. And then those young men will be free to go home or do whatever for one weekend. And they certainly deserve that. But uh, I made a post last night on our on our board and uh, it sounds like i don't know if it's a hundred percent true but uh sound like kirby smart let them know uh after the game yesterday that uh, monday is not an off day and uh, be ready to practice and he um you know what's it say the, the saying there west better never rest well uh these, these young men may be look they may be staring down an extra practice and that's tomorrow in athens um instead of uh you know sitting at a deer stand somewhere or, hmm. you know, somewhere else, uh, you're going to be on that practice field. And Gunpowder Kirby, season starts this week, Rusty, if you want to do that front-loaded well, muzzle. I'm just telling uh, you, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Mine's not – I can't find mine right now, strange enough. I'll have to go back <laughs> and find that. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, that's 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 interesting, you know, and that tells you we're Kirby Smart. You know, it's, hey, we're going to work. You know, there's no – we're not going to talk about it. We're, go we're going to work. So – you get in an extra practice, um, you know, as, as opposed to that. But normal bye week is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You would probably go helmet, shoulder pads Tuesday, full practice, full pads Wednesday, another full pad Thursday and get out of there. But sounds like they're going to work an extra practice in. And in my opinion, that's probably what we've talked about for the first 20 minutes of this thing is, you know, what offensive package are we going to do and, and, and some of those things. So, you're not going to sit around and waste a day, but I'm pretty confident on Friday these young men will be turned loose to go home and see their families, and most of them have not been home, or most of them have not had an off day, uh, guys, since that 4th of July week, and that, that's being honest. So you think about that and where you've been since the 4th of July. These young men have been training, hosting recruits, whole month of August, seven games in a row, and finally got to a bye week. It's no joke to play football at the University of Georgia. There's, uh, you know, and to me, going into this bye week, I think that you came off of a game that really sets up well for Kirby. Uh, you've got a lot to sell about, you know, as opposed to Kentucky, right? If it were the Kentucky game and you come off of that one, man, everybody's riding that high and feeling like we got this bird cruising right now. You go into Vanderbilt, a, a team that people, I mean, it was a 31 and a half point spread in that game. Georgia wasn't close to, to covering that. And, you know, so suddenly it's back to that idea of, look, you guys are playing to your competition. We've got plenty of things to work on. Let's get this thing right before we go out the door. Guys aren't going to be going home, you know, kind of rubbing their hands together, top of the world, saying, hey, we're still number one, just like we always have been. Uh, I, I think that, it, like I said, for me, for Kirby, it sets up pretty well for what he probably wants uh, to instill going into this week. A whole lot to teach up for sure. And I certainly didn't expect Georgia to cover that game. I don't know how my other picks went this week on our Dogs HQ column. Probably not good. But coming off of Kentucky, I just feel like this team is still too young to dominate at will like that week in and week out. And so you got a lot of things to look at. And yeah, the Brock Bowers injury was bad. Uh, turnovers on the road, bad. You can't have that stuff. I think that's what Georgia's got to focus on. I mean, the defense is coming up with turnovers. I don't know where they are in the margin right now, but the offense is giving the ball away too, though. So when you emphasize turnovers, right, like for Bama, you know, last season, expected them to emphasize penalties. I was surprised to see that they still struggle with penalties out of the gate this season. For Georgia, wow. the tough thing for them right now is turnovers. And you're going to have that with Carson Beck, who's just getting started in this offense. But the fumbles, you know, those kinds of things, and the drops too. And I'm not just going to single out Arian Smith, uh, but he right now, kind of like Lad McConkey was last year, I think that's the the hope for Arian mm -hmm. Smith is you've got evidence of a guy on your team that struggled with this last year, was sluggish. You know he's a big playmaker, but that guy's got to focus on getting the ball in because he's burning guys, but he can't just – he can't seem to connect right now 
as easily as you think it should happen. So I think Georgia's got to focus on turnovers, continue to focus defensively on getting them because that's keeping you in a lot of ball games and turning things around. That Tyke Smith pick was huge before halftime yesterday. So turnover is the big thing for me that Georgia needs to look at this bye week. Yeah, you know, and I, I think this was a great reminder uh, to these guys, a, a lot of these guys who've been around immense success in their Georgia career, back-to-back -back national championships. This week versus Vandy was a perfect reminder of you are not those guys. This is not the same team. You allowed the first touchdown to Vanderbilt since 2018, all right? I guarantee you that's going to be a talking point over the course of the week in Butts Mere of, look, this is not – we are not those guys – we are our own thing. You know, you can ride that high, and you have been probably for a long time, but that's a big streak to have been broken. Um, now, it's an SEC road win, and you got out of there in what was a toughly contested game, and quite frankly, you had the turf working against you too, and I've seen a couple people mention that over in the comment section as well. But, you know, this is a situation, like I said, where you can kind of get those minds right and say, look, there's a lot even at this stage in the game, even at this point in the season, that we still have to get cleaned up before we can put ourselves in that echelon with those previous teams. And I, I think that Kirby's going to continue harping on that, man. Uh, we got a question here about Michael Williams. Is he banged up too? I mean, there's a couple injuries of note. Um, I haven't heard anything on Michael, but we did hear that Kendall Milton aggravated his MCL. That tightened up on him. So, I mean, just kind of a shame that Georgia's offense can't have it all together at once. You know, you just – you can't have that much luck this season, it doesn't seem like. But any any word on Michael that you've heard, Rusty? No, uh, he's fine, I believe. Uh, he's – you know, it's – it kind of sounds bad, but it's really not the way they do it. He, Michael doesn't start for Georgia. Tremel Waltower starts. And, you know, number 90 plays four or five plays, and then they bring in Michael Williams and – and then he plays, and then he's usually on their rabbit package on the third down blitz. So, you know, it's all about yesterday. What was so bad about that game? It was only 44 defensive plays for Georgia, so they didn't get a chance to play a ton of people. But I did notice that uh, Michael and Marvin Jones Jr. played the majority, a large majority of those snaps. So, you know, even even to say Michael Williams doesn't start really doesn't doesn't say the whole picture because he plays about. 70% of the time and Georgia rotates linemen now. That's just the way they do. So um they 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 just um you know Michael's fine. I expect him to be look, you're gonna know where Georgia's depth chart is real quick. And and Rue should probably laugh about this because he understands it. Um you're gonna know where Georgia's depth chart is real quick, and that's gonna be in two weeks in Jacksonville. And then you'll get the piece on Sunday. When you get the snap count from Jake Roosh, and I'd tell you exactly what's going on in Athens right now, uh, you know, barring some injuries and health wise, you can tell who's where and what. And yesterday, uh, even with only 44 snaps, you see Georgia in a tight game. I mean, it's a 10 point game in the fourth quarter, so they didn't get a chance to play any young kids. Uh, you still see Marvin Jones Jr. playing the majority of snaps, you know, at outside backer. And they also found a way to add Damon Wilson in, get him some reps. So now they have something on tape from Marvin Jones Jr. outside linebacker and a uh, former five-star true freshman Damon Wilson. You didn't want to get reps that way, but Monroe Freeland, they've got two and a half quarters of him now as well in the game at right tackle. So, uh, which I thought, you know, first off what I saw, Jake Rowe break that down a little further, but you start thinking about those types of guys and, and they got those guys into the games that kind of tells you what's going on and kind of the thinking behind the scenes. Yeah. The Marvin Jones thing jumped off the page to me this week in the snap count. I mean, neck and neck with Chaz Chambliss, I think 17 snaps a piece for those guys. That's been a position that Chaz has to this point had a chokehold on. I mean, we're talking about probably a two to one ratio in terms of reps versus other guys to see Marvin one-to-one -one with him that kind of tells you to me where he is at this season and also to what Georgia feels they need and what he can bring to that. You know, I, I think that uh, they've had some issues that they wanted to get corrected and does Marvin Jones fit better with, you know, taking care of those things. You know, I, I was really kind of um, struck by that. It felt like he played a lot yesterday, but to see it kind of laid out in that way was quite interesting to me. Feels like maybe this guy trending in the way that people thought he would, 
um, you know, especially in, in year two in the program. Well, it's time tackle for loss. It's time for seven. I mean, he had he had off season. Listen, he had off season shoulder labrum surgery. Yep. Uh, I've said it many times. He was on a pitch count last year, so he could only play like twelve plays a game. People kept asking, "Where's Marvin Jones?" Well, he would play about ten plays, and his shoulder would go numb. So, like that's you know, he had surgery as soon as the season was over, and he was out all spring. So, you know, he's still getting into the flow of things. And uh, you know he's only going to get better as the year goes on. But that was interesting to me that they got him in there. I mean, he's a former five star, six five, you know, uh, pass rushing guy. So uh, we'll see how much Marvin Jones is playing uh, in Jacksonville in two weeks. And what a warrior, too, man! I mean, you know, to even even on the pitch count, I, I sleep wrong and my shoulder goes numb. <laughs> I mean, this guy this guy was out there taking taking reps against SEC offensive tackles and trying to bring yes. guys to the ground. So, uh, you know, I, I think that the want is clear. I think that the ability is clear, and I think that you're seeing that, like you said, uh, doing the snap count thing every week. You've seen it kind of gradually increase for Marvin Jones. And to uh, to see that one, I'm really interested in this bye week and the moving into Florida, what it kind of looks like for Marvin Jones and his role uh, beyond the bye. Carson Beck getting a lot of love in our comments. And I want to point out that this game will be big for him. And that's oh, going to be a big storyline that you're going to see for the next two weeks as Beck mm-hmm. goes back home uh, to Jacksonville. And it can either propel him I don't think it's going to get in his ears. I mean, I haven't really seen Beck get rattled at all. <laughs> There's some fans that wanted to see a little bit more emotion out of the guy, but I think what he's got going so far is working well for the dogs. He's got a bye week now, and he's got all game week to prepare for that homecoming. I think it could be a big one for 15. We'll see how it goes. 